and from the other, everyone involved, that there will be enforceability of some of the, of the provisions of the legislation, that it will really be an improvement on the current uh, NAFTA than we'll be able to proceed. But I'm optimistic uh, about that. I'm still hoping that, and this came up across, although we were focused on for the people agenda, lower health care costs, build uh, in bigger paychecks by building the infrastructure of America, cleaner government. That was our agenda in the campaign. One of our priorities in this session has been to uh, reduce the risk of gun violence in our country. It's now been 232 days since we sent our bipartisan legislation to the Senate. Uh, every day about 100 people die from gun violence nearly half of them children to, and teen, up to the age of teenagers. Uh, my colleague, Frederica Wilson, when I was in Florida during the break, gave me this bracelet made from a bullet and the orange color of gun violence prevention. So it, we're not going away until we get legislation passed to reduce gun violence in our country. The, um, as, as you know, this has been a week of some issues that relate to our foreign engagement. I was very proud of the work on the floor of Congress to associate ourselves with the democratic aspirations of the young people of Hong Kong. I've been working with now three generations of Hong Kong uh, democratic leaders just for, for them, for the Chinese regime to obey the basic law under which uh, Hong Kong was to exist, one country, two systems, un living under the basic law, which made certain guarantees that are not being lived up to. But Congress came through this week spoke very clearly in a bipartisan way about our support for that. Now, we are eager to that we have bipartisan support in the Senate, too, so hopefully that will come up soon there. As you know, yesterday on the floor, 354 members voted in a bipartisan way to oppose the president's dangerous decision uh, in regard to Syria. By two to one, Republicans voted to oppose the president's actions. There were only 60 votes in favor of the legislation. Uh, the legislation would have called for Turkey to use restraint for us to help our friends, uh, to be a trustworthy ally to, the, to Kurds, especially in humanitarian needs now that they're being bombed by the, by the Turks or being attacked by the Turks. It also calls for the president to show a clear plan for how Americans will be protected from ISIS which has been further unleashed. Green light to the Turks, actions taken that are uh, uh, renege on our handshake uh, with, the, with the Kurds, and now, and now we need to have a plan to deal with uh, what happens with ISIS. As you know, that was the subject of conversation yesterday at the White House. I also uh, pointed out to the President I had concerns <coughs> that <coughs> the El Road seemed to lead to Putin. Uh, the Russians have been trying to get a foothold in the Middle East for a very long time, unsuccessful. The president has given them the opportunity with the Kurds reaching out to them uh, for support in Syria. Uh, they have, uh, the, the Russians were the beneficiaries of any withholding of assistance or encouragement to the Ukraine. Again, Putin benefits. The Russians benefited, Putin did. Oh, and President could place some doubt about our commitment to NATO right from the start of his administration. All roads lead to Putin. Then the President said, well, the reason I'm taking the troops out of, of Syria is because I promised in the campaign to bring the troops home. My question to him was, is Saudi Arabia home? Is Saudi Arabia home? Why are our troops going to Saudi Arabia if you promised to bring them home? He said, well, the Saudi Arabians are paying for it. But Really? We're putting our troops in harm's way for Saudi Arabia because they're paying? I, it, it just didn't add up. But what it did do was cause a meltdown on the part of the president because he was unhappy with that, uh, those questions. And it was so unfortunate because we really went to, we were invited to the meeting. The president started off the meeting by saying, I don't know who asked for this meeting. I didn't. And we were like, well, then, well, let's proceed anyway. And, uh, um, we had hoped that our, our real mission was to find out what the plan was. Leader, um, Leader Schumer was very forceful in that discussion with the president on what is the plan. 
My plan is to protect America. So that's a goal. That's not a plan. What is the plan for us to be protected from ISIS now that some of them have been unleashed in Syria because of the green light that the president gave the Turks and, and reneging on our trustworthiness as an ally with the Kurds who had been our friends? So for these and other reasons, that was most unfortunate. Um, <clears throat> on a separate front of all of that, uh, I'm very proud of the work of Count, uh, Chairman Adam Schiff. Uh, again, this is so solemn. None of us came to Congress to impeach a president. That's not what we come here to do. And any such actions are to be taken very solemnly and seriously, in my view, prayerfully. It isn't a unifying thing for the country to have to go through this, but we do have to go, we do have to honor our oath of office to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States, our democracy, and our republic, as Benjamin Franklin said, a republic if we can keep it. Well, it is our fight to keep it. As I've said to you before, the times have found us to do just that. So I'm very proud of the work that Adam Schiff is doing. And this isn't about politics or partisanship. It's about patriotism for our country. And, the, and I, I pr uh, value the way he is conducting this with equal time on all sides for the questioning that are there. Uh, you've heard from him. Uh, we, we were here together when he presented how he was proceeding. He also sent a letter to members yesterday, which is in the public domain. I call it to your attention in case you have some questions about the professionalism with, and the fairness with which uh, these hearings are being held. Any questions? Madam Speaker, yes. First of all, my condolences on... Yeah, that's so sad. On the impeachment inquiry... How important is it to you not to let this lead over into an election year? Well, I think, as I've really made, thanks, Nancy, for the question, and thank you for your condolences, Elijah. I keep saying to people, impeachment is about the truth and the Constitution of the United States. Any other issues that you have disapproving of the way the president has dealt with Syria, whatever the subject is, reluctance, the cowardice to do something about gun violence, the cruelty of not wanting to help our dreamers and transgender people, the denial about a, a climate crisis that we face, the list goes on. That's about the election. That has nothing to do with what is happening in terms of our honor our oath of office to protect and defend the Constitution and the facts that might support. And, and we don't know where this path will take us, but could take us. Uh, down a further path, but uh, but these two are completely separate. But at what point would you say, let's let the voters decide? Who said that? Uh, no, I'm saying, at what point might you say, let's just let no, the voters no, decide? We, uh, no, the voters are not going to decide whether we honor our